Fare bella fugila. Make a good impression. Be a sharp dressed man number 10. Hi, my name is Greg Story. I'm the president of Dale Kanegi Training here in Tokyo. I run my own soft skills training franchise business, and many years ago, I decided to dress for success. Each day, I consult my schedule, and that day's work content drives my sartorial choices. Before I head out the door every day, I check myself in the mirror and ask, do I look like one of the most professional people in my industry? Now, this day, I had some internal meetings all day with most of my direct reports, so no clients to see and no podcast interviews to do. The temptation is to just dress for myself on these days, but I'm always conscious that I might run into a client at lunch or out and about in Tokyo. I often have lunch at the Tokyo American Club because I'm guaranteed to run into clients there, whereas at a local restaurant in my office, the chances of that happening would be extremely rare. I always want to project a consistent impression of polished professionalism. I chose this dark charcoal grey Xenia single-breasted suit with double cuff side vents, Dale Carnegie corporate badge, Cartier tank Francaise watch, custom shirt with white collar and white French cuffs and blue cufflinks. The tight and strong blue and white stripe in the shirt is actually hard to pair with ties, so I chose this dark blue, unusual Versace pattern tie with my usual double Windsor knot. The pocket square with my uh, three-way fold is by Swedish designer Amanda Christensen, which I picked up in Helsinki. The high shine shoes are black Oxfords by Polini. Outwear for rainy day is my classic blue-grey raincoat by Burberry, black St. Dupont cashmere scarf, Homburg hat by Locke & Co Hatters London. The Homburg is distinctive and you may have seen it worn by Al Pacino's character in the movie The Godfather. Being a wimpy Aussie from nice and warm Brisbane, I find the Tokyo winters quite cold. Wearing a hat makes such a big difference in the cold. I made this part of my winter uniform. I thought Pacino looked pretty sharp in that hat, so I ordered one from London to try it out. It was a break from wearing my fedora all the time. In the late 19th century, the Homburg hat was brought to England by the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII, from a hunting trip to Germany. On a side note, he is also the reason we all leave the last button on our suit jackets open. He gained some weight and couldn't close the last button. All the courtiers in England followed his example, and here we all are, still doing it today. It has become de rigueur now, and if we buttoned up that last button, we would appear unorthodox and odd. You'll often see Winston Churchill and Anthony Eden wearing their Homburgs in old photographs taken around the Second World War. Today, hats have been replaced with baseball caps, but for me, a hat is so much more stylish than a baseball cap. The TV series Peaky Blinders has created a revival of the soft caps from England, but I haven't joined that bandwagon as yet. If you want to accelerate your proficiency in leadership, communication, sales, presentations, or diversity, equity, inclusion, do it yourself. Trial and error, waste time and resources. There's only one place operating the highest level, Dale, Carnegie Tokyo Training, and there are more details about what we do and get in contact with us in the attachments to this video.